Pepper says, are you ready to declutter and organize some clothes in this dresser? I know I am. Hello everyone and welcome back to A Hoarder's Heart. On this episode, we're gonna be decluttering and organize kids' clothes in my son's dresser. It is overflowing and unorganized with a bunch of clothes that I believe half of them he doesn't even fit into anymore. And with school starting up, I like to have this all organized so that we can easily pick out clothes for him in the morning to go to school. Now, this video is in collaboration with Get Organized HQ 2023. This is a virtual online event starting on September 11th, going throughout the week, where you're going to see different speakers and bloggers and YouTubers talking about how to clean, declutter, organize, organize your finances, meal plan, cooking recipes, and talking about hoarding disorder with me, Miss Hart. <laughs> if you would like to check out the Get Organized HQ virtual event, please click on the link in the description box below so you can get free access to it. There is also an all access pass available at a small cost. That way you can watch it 24 seven for a lifetime. But now let's circle back around because we gotta get in here and start decluttering and organizing these drawers. So it's been a while since I decluttered and organized my youngest son's drawers. And I know that a lot of this stuff is going to be outgrown. Now, I already have drawer organizers in here, so this is going to make it a little easier to go through all the clothes and declutter and organize it. And I am gonna be using the boundary method or the container method while we're cleaning this all out. So we're gonna start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. And this right away is a tossy tossy. So first I'm going to pull the underwear that he does wear because underneath of it is a lot of character underwear that my son has not worn in many, many years. And it's just stayed in the drawer. So we'll be letting go of all of this. And right next to me, I have two bins. The blue bin are the items that we're going to let go of because they no longer fit. And the gray bins is what we're currently wearing and does still fit so that we can put it back into the drawers and organize it. And that is what we're going to be doing for each category of clothes. Now, as I'm going through this, I wanna talk a little more about the boundary method or the container concept, which was something I first heard of from Dana K. White, A Slob Comes Clean. And the idea that I grasped from it was that you're keeping a category contained in its container and it's serving as a boundary or a limit. An example of that would be Tyler's socks need to fit into the drawer organizer designated for his socks. It needs to all fit in that organizer. So at first, you put your favorite or most wearable items in the container. And what is left that does not fit into the container, you declutter that. And this is an absolutely great method to use when it comes to organizing because it uses basic logic. But I have to admit, as someone who is a recovering hoarder, who holds on to things emotionally and not logically, I needed to look a little deeper and I needed to take a few baby steps before I could be successful in using the boundary method or the container concept. I have had hoarding disorder my whole life and still do, but the behaviors began in childhood. So I never established any type of boundary when it came to stuff, belongings, items in your house. The hoarding of the stuff came from a self-soothing mechanism to regulate my nervous system. I had only stopped the action of hoarding when my anxiety was calm. There was never an internal dialogue of, oh, I'm going to hoard 20 things and then I know my nervous system will calm itself down. It was just save, hold on to everything until the fear, the stress, the emotion, the PTSD felt soothed and calmed. And that was never an established number or a boundary that was defined. 
It was just an action taken until the emotions of fear and scared disappeared. So when I first started, as someone who had 20 bins of clothes just for myself, I couldn't establish a boundary container method where all the clothes just fit in the drawers or the closet because there was never an established boundary to begin with. So I had to start where I was and where I was was I had 20 bins contained. That was my baseline that I can identify now. And throughout the years, I took these baby steps, letting go of what felt good in my heart so that I could keep my nervous system regulated to continue decluttering. So for myself and my hoarding disorder, it was never, I'm going to put my favorites into the container and whatever doesn't fit, I'm going to declutter. For my boundary method, it was, how many containers can I go down to to keep my nervous system regulated? The first time around, it was I had 20 bins of clothes, and now my boundary is 18 bins of clothes to make my nervous system feel safe, secure. It wasn't too far away from my baseline. I didn't cut it in half and go down to 10 bins because I was not emotionally ready to get to that space. So for myself, it was how many articles of clothing or how many bins is going to keep my nervous system calm because that's the boundary for this category of my clothing. This inventory feel safe to me so that decluttering becomes a positive experience so that I will do it again and again. And over the years, you've seen the tossy tossy piles become bigger and bigger. And all of this right here in this bottom drawer, I'm letting go of this because this feels safe to my nervous system. And I finally have decluttered enough that I have drastically lowered the amount of clothes, the amount of containers, the amount of items to keep my nervous system calm. Because we're letting go of all of this. I had to add two more bins to fit all the clothes that we're letting go of this episode. And now that I have recovered from a level four hoarder to now a level one hoarder, I can now do the container method properly, the way that it was originally intended. So we're going to be putting the items back into the drawers, organizing them. And I like this because I can see how much we have of each category because I can definitely see what we need to purchase for back to school shopping. Now for the second drawer, I'm going to change the category of it. This is going to be the home for summer clothes, like bathing suits and shorts. And I like to fold the clothes using the Kamari method. That is my favorite way of folding because it's very easy to do. And I can see everything that is in that drawer. Now, as my boys have gotten older, they don't really wear summer pajamas. So I have an extra bin in this drawer for now. And since we established the second drawer for being all of the summer bottoms, the third drawer is going to be for all of the winter bottoms, like pants and pajama sets, because he does wear winter pajamas. And of course, again, I'm going to show you how I do the Kamari style of folding for pants and pajamas, because this has been very helpful for me for keeping the drawers organized so that we can see everything when we open it up. And because I can see everything so visually, I can see that I will need to purchase him a new set of winter pajamas for this upcoming season. And the pants, they fit perfectly. And I separated them by color, one row being gray and the other one being black. That way I can see how much inventory of each color pant we have. And now moving to the last drawer on the bottom. This was such a mix of clothes that didn't fit him anymore. And honestly, I think I'm going to just keep this empty for today. I'm not sure what to put in here. I might put blankets in here in the future, but for today, I'm going to keep it empty. 
And now I can show you the amazing progress that we made today. We decluttered a lot of stuff. We organized it using the boundary method or the container method, whichever terminology you prefer to use. We also dove a little deeper into the boundary method, recognizing that people who are emotionally attached to their stuff or have hoarding disorder, they have to establish a boundary where they are at their baseline. So if it's still 20 containers worth of stuff, they have to take those baby steps into lowering those containers, decluttering based on the amount that keeps their nervous system regulated so that they can continue on their decluttering journey. And speaking of which, we did amazing. Now, do we still have some things that we need to organize in this room? Absolutely, and we'll be doing that this fall. And my hope and my prayer is that this video motivated and encouraged you to clean and declutter something in your home today too.